Jean Francois dry heaved as his face stared at the depths of the bipedal bathroom's toilet. On a normal day, he didn't like thinking about how meat found its way on his plate. Knowing that the particular meat he'd been eating used to be someone was magnitudes worse. As he began seriously thinking of going vegan for the length of his stay at Tarmina, the whole station shook violently, splashing back at him the vomit he'd just hurled, causing him to repeat the cycle. When everything was absolutely out of his system, he realised there was some kind of alarm going off. Very quickly, he washed away most of what splashed on his shirt with some water, and exited the bathroom. Out in the corridors, panic was set as various crew members, faculty staff and students ran from one side to the other. In the chaos that was ensuing, Jean-Francois watched as a smaller student, a daymead, fell down as it connected with another Xena who was moving fast. He made his way to it and helped it get up, the creature being only slightly taller than a metre. Hey, you okay? What's happening? He knelt down next to it, offering his hand to help it up. The little Damien's heart and his breathing was intensified, but he managed to grab his hand and get himself up. It's the issue to see! We need to find somewhere to hide! Jean-Francois scratched his head and tried thinking quickly. That loud explosion, the panic, could it be an attack? He tried to pry more information out of the satyr-like creature. What's a yish -ani? Why do we need to hide? The panicked Damien's little eyes darted across the corridors, looking through the crowds, trying to find something. Raiders! Look, we don't! The little creature yelled in surprise and darted off as fast as little legs could carry it. Jean-Francois tried to stop it, but the daymead was gone before he could. Turning around to look in the direction that the Xeno was looking in, he nearly had a heart attack. Down the corridor, standing over seven feet tall, was a group of alien-looking plants making their way towards him with something that looked like a weapon held in their hands, a stark contrast to their very natural-looking bodies. Their roots, three of them, slivered forward, each one at a time. Jean-Francois watched with some morbid fascination as a slower crew member, likely some kind of electrician judging by the equipment it carried, tripped and fell in the corridor. The plant-like alien moved over the Xeno and branch-like tendrils picked up the electrician, bringing him to his body and absorbing him. Jean-Francois was broken out of staring at the scene, instinct telling him to run. At first he thought of returning to the classroom to warn the others, but what good would that do? Instead, he made his way to the dome. Please calm down, shouted Mrs. Baldwin, trying to get a semblance of order in the class, as every student, save the humans, was panicking. A few stopped, looking at the teacher for guns, making others less agitated by proxy. Now, now, remember the trills, everything will be fine, she used a serene voice, trying to get them to drop out of their current state of mind. She gestured for everyone to regain their seats. Remember, the Ishini want hostages, it would not make sense for them to kill you. Uh, several questions come to mind here, Laura interjected from a corner of the classroom. Barry nodded and added, Yeah, I'm out of the loop here. Oh, right, that would explain why you were so calm. Mrs. Muldrum remembered they had arrived later and missed the formal orientation that most students go through. The Yishini homeworld was destroyed many years ago as they could not get along with other species. Now their remnants are pirates and opportunists, raiding merchants and ransoming hostages. So, um, the aliens are coming to take us as hostages? asked Laura. That is the gist of it, yes. I can see you're worried. They do keep their word, insisted Mrs. Baldrin. Well, they even have school shootings in space. I'm starting to really feel at home here, remarked Barry, the hint of sarcasm largely going over the Xenos' head. Behind that, however, Barry's mind was thinking about how his government's approach to negotiating with terrorist threats was. They simply did not, and was not looking forward to be taken as a hostage. Now, let's be quiet, and perhaps they will not find us. Mrs. Muldron locked the door to the class using the small electrical pad to the side, for what good that would do. Everyone was either sitting down, resigned to their fate, or trying to hide behind something. Aside from a few whispered and hushed conversations, the class was eerily silent, hoping to pass unnoticed. Their efforts were in vain, however, as the Yishini were going door to door, looking for someone in particular. The door rattled, something having hit it or tried prying it open. Many of the students simply stared straight ahead, too scared to move, while others looked around, trying to find a spot they could hide. Yeah, I'm not going down without a fight, Barry said out loud to no one in particular as he began hitting his chest with his right hand. What's he doing? asked the curious Lasona, watching Barry strike his chest with his fist in a repeated motion. I think he's trying to force an adrenaline rush, replied Izumi. 
What is that? Asked another of the students that were seated next to them. I couldn't take the specifics offhand just like that, but it's a chemical in our bloodstream that helps us temporarily get stronger, faster, breathe better, dulls pain, etc. Part of our fight or flight mechanism. Barris decided he wants to fight, so he's trying to trick his brain into thinking he's in danger, so to be better prepared. Yeah, I don't think we need much tricking right now. Laura let out a small, sarcastic laugh, looking at the door and hearing the raiders fiddle with it. Barry stopped his masochistic ritual and went next to the door, putting his shoulder on the wall next to it while keeping the front of his body facing the door, but out of sight of it. The Yushin-Ni finally managed to get the wiring hack they needed to open the door, or at least unlock it. A branch-like hand protruded from the door, pushing it open. Barry wasted no time and tackled the first intruder through the door, both of them falling to the floor. The alien fell with a thud. His tall frame meant that his head hit the wall first, then smashed down on the floor as Barry landed on it. Using the opportunity, Barry began wailing on it with his fists. Soft, wet crunches from the plant matter being crushed sounded audibly to everyone in the classroom. From beyond the door, another one of the Xenos aimed his weapon at Barry and fired a small needle-like projectile, buried itself in Barry's right shoulder, the syringe emptying its contents in him. Barry shrugged it off, knocking aside the projectile with his left hand, too focused to care. The Yushini on the floor tried to reach for his weapon, but Barry kicked it away, and then began reaching for his branch like limb. With a savage snap, he broke the creature's appendage, hoping it would prevent him from trying to reach again or defend from his blows. With his appendage broken, the Yushini could not stop Barry as he reached out and clawed out chunks of him with his bare hands, throwing bits and pieces of him to the floor. Laura and Izumi followed soon after the second one shot Barry, each grabbing one side of it and pulling it in the classroom. Close the door! Laura shouted to the teacher, who reacted slowly from the shock of the scene playing out in the classroom. Together, they threw down the Yishini, and Laura straddled it, using her hands to try and control it. Using that time, Izumi swung at the creature that Laura was holding with a chair, whacking it repeatedly in what appeared to be its face. Its hands now coloured green and dripping from unknown fluids, Barry stepped away from the no longer moving Yishini after giving it a final kick. He approached the one on the ground, which was managing to resist Laura and partially block Izumi's chair swings, and stepped with his talon at the centre of his mass. A sickening crunch resonated, and Barry kept at it, a green mulch forming on the ground where his body used to be from the strikes of his shoes, which were now covered with a green goop. You fucking piece of shit! Shoot me, huh? The wet sloshing sound continued. Barry striking the pile that was the Yishini with continued vigour, until Laura put a hand on his shoulder. Taking a deep breath, he sat down at his place and looked at his feet. His formerly white Nike Air Moloch were likely beyond even the most intense cleaning session. Pain now began coming back, the moment having passed and he rubbed his shoulder. Anyone know what was in that? Izumi fetched the other weapon which hadn't been shot yet and brought it to the teacher. Taking the ammunition out, Mrs. Moulton looked over the small vial. Ah, this is C17H21, uh, NO4. A compound which overloads postsynaptic receptors to shut them down, making targets easy to pick up. It is mostly harmless in that dosage amount. Barry should generally fall asleep soon. You sure? Because my heart rate is fast and I can't stop shaking. Oh man, I've never felt so alive. Fuck. Any more of them? I'd find another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Barry was twitching and restless, his head turning and looking everywhere. Most students seem to be more scared of him than the raiders by this point. I'm not sure, but I think I've heard that somewhere else before. Izumi went and fetched her laptop, making a quick search in her offline copy of Wikipedia. Her eyebrows furrowed as she read the article and then gasped slightly. They shot him with cocaine. 